Good morning, fellow privateers. Kind of a late, uh, late start here for me. I apologize. I would have liked to have gotten this out before the uh, CME open, but uh, I got tied up a bit. So let's talk about the week ahead video. We'll talk a little bit about the news over the weekend. Um, we'll look at some charts. Um, I did see something about North Korea conducts their fifth weapons test since July 25th. Something interesting is going on over there. Um, Epstein, what's it? Jeffrey Epstein, complete effing scumbag, supposedly hung himself um, in jail, which is weird. And he was not on suicide watch. And he tried to kill himself two or three weeks ago. So that's, there's going to be some uh, pretty big conspiracy theories going on there. Um, if we take a look at the week ahead, um, what do we have? G7 meeting is August 24th. No biggie. You know, it's a couple weeks away. There's not a lot. There's actually not a lot going on. Um, Norges Bank, I believe, is out this week. Uh, Monday, today, there's really nothing. Um, on the data front, we have the RBA Assistant Governor Kent speaking to some association. Um, that could be okay. Worth paying attention to uh, today. Uh, else, we have some inflation data out of uh, Europe. I think it's just German and French. UK jobs, ZEW for Europe and Germany, that's important. Um, we have US CPI. Um, I believe that's, that's either, I think that's on Tuesday. Um, I'll have to double check the calendar. You know, so there's a bit, there is actually a bit going on. Then RBA's Deputy Governor Guy DeBell is speaking on Thursday. Um, he's actually going to be talking about FX, it sounds like. And, you know, that's about it. You know, we're kind of, the in the U.S. at least, um, a lot of the families are probably coming back right now. Uh, the kids' sports tryout for fall sports is starting this week, so a lot of people are back. There'll be there'll be some more traders in the seats, you know, compared to last week. We we did warn on um, what day was that? The second uh, August fourth, fifth, sixth. Um, we did we did talk about you know we were expecting some equity selling and risk off and we did a pretty good job of that we we managed it uh, okay we did get stopped out in some of our risk uh, like our, our risk off trades that we had on we got stopped out for a profit on the way back up which is fine um, you know we actually ended up getting on some kind of low s and P's to cover some of our shorts and um, you know, worked out okay. Some of the uh, the Aussie crosses that we're involved in, uh, and we'll go over those charts. Um, what else here? Norges Bank U.S. retail sales, U.S. CPI, German and Eurozone GDP on Wednesday. Like the, I think those are the, kind of the the highlights. So why don't we go ahead and look at the charts? So you can see here. This is important. I, Thought I had this fib drawn earlier. I apologize. Um, fib retracement. Here we go. So from the all-time highs, S&P 3028, 3029, something like that, and to that sell-off that we saw on uh, earlier in the week. Um, was that Friday? Sorry. Um, so you can see where it stalled. Uh, it was a pretty powerful move back up. You know, we retraced an entire huge down red candle. Um, so we got up to about the two thirds. So, you know, anywhere between 
for me now it's pretty much this so it's it's interesting so we have the fractals here so that high which was uh the other day the high was uh 2941 so i'll call it that high and the low here at 2777 2778 you have a fractal here you have a fractal there these are the inflection points going forward, you know, for that, for that one. So NASDAQ, you know, similar type, massive bounce. Let's run the fibs. Hold on. There we go. So from the all-time high in the NASDAQ, did two-thirds perfectly. And the the low, um, I don't know the 200 day. The low was the the 200 day, and it was the um, three quarter Fibo. If you look at this swing, I, you know I think we talked about this. We're not, we're definitely selling rallies in risk, and we are. You can see where that stopped, um, right here at this pink line, and the 200 day comes in right around there. So anyhow. You know, now on the way back up, any of you FIB masters, uh, that's a pretty good place to stop. You know, it's retraced two thirds, 61.8% 61 .8 of the move from the all time high down to that sell off low last week. Um, so that's a NASDAQ. So you, you get the idea. We're, we're still looking to sell rallies and risk and, you know, SPs and NASDAQ and DAX and whatever. Um, we, uh, you know, we're, you're, you're, we're at this phase now where it's, a, you know, you gotta be pretty tactical, but there's definitely no good news coming out of the trade talks with China. The September meeting may not even happen. I think Trump said, so it's a, it's a sell rallies and risk, I think is the, the best way to play it. There's 10 year yields, us 10s. Had that big bounce, 160. First higher, then we doji kind of pretty ugly bar there, and then we were back up on Friday. Um, you know, I think people are waiting to buy bonds on the dip. So my guess is anywhere near like 190 to 195. Um, these old lows, I think that there'll be uh, there'll be some buyers of, of 10 years. Let's take a look at gold. Uh, WTI, I haven't been paying attention to, as you can see, because I've got a gazillion fibs there. Um, here's gold. You know, a couple of uh, two inside days in a row, which is interesting. So this thing's getting ready to move. When you have two inside days back to back, that you can see these blue, uh, these blue line, these uh, blue candles. Um, I, it looks like it's getting wound up, and you know, it's about to make a move. Um, Copper not doing much. Let's go over to the currencies. I'm trying to keep this one short today, but I found myself, uh, you know, trying to get back in the swing of things. I've been off for a while, you know, did the video last Sunday because I thought it was a good time to be paying attention. And, you know, a lot of our followers were very complimentary about their, uh, you know, about kind of that risk off view that we had. And uh, it worked out pretty well the first couple of days of the week. Well, first 48, 36 hours of the week, probably. Um, so currencies, we have positions in still long some dollar Canadian. That got clobbered. Um, we were fortunate enough to take a little bit off, as you can see here. Um, I think it was around 133.20, maybe. Whatever that fib is. Yeah, we were selling ahead of that. Um, blew out to, I don't even know what this trend line is, what this horizontal is. It's thrown it ages ago. Um, anyhow, so we're, you know, we're, we're still kind of hanging on these longs and dollar CAD. Um, you know, the NASDAQ, we could, we covered two thirds of that position. S&P, we sold some on Friday and it hasn't moved from where we sold it, somewhere around 29.20. Um, 
Sterling, I kind of missed. Let's look at the Sterling chart. Sterling, I kind of missed this after this, you know, handful of days of consolidation between 120.85 and 120.212. All this sideways stuff, I kind of missed this. And I think it was a pretty clean break, but I wasn't in front of the screens below 120.80. Um, Sterling Yen's working really well. Um, we put this on last week. Uh, what day did we do it here? We, put, we sold it on August 6th. Um, there was that one up day. It was almost like a bullish engulfing day. And I'm like, this is complete bullshit. Um, so we sold it, and that's working out pretty well. And if we look at a weekly and um, strolling out, you know, we're through that flash crashy thing, whatever that real low was. But if we take a look at this, let's see if I can uh, <coughs> scrunch this up a bit. We're at, you know, we're at couple of year we're getting really close to these old lows which was way back in uh, you know after brexit it was like September 2016 so we're not that far we're 200 points away I suspect we go there I'm massively bearish cable um, so sterling yen's working pretty well your Aussie worked extremely well um, you know we started talking about buying your Aussie a week ago um, you know down around I think it was one where was it it was 160 I think I, I think it was around 161 um, oh that's a weekly hold on a second guys sorry no it was a break of here yeah it was this break here 162.58 and then the next break was at 164.55, which we added. And then it had this crazy, ugly bar. So we, we took a little bit off up here on the close. I didn't like that close. And I got hammered the next day. And now it's kind of coming back up. So um, we still like your Aussie um, a bit higher. And we had a target of 168. It got 167.90 pretty much. Um, you know, we stopped out of some longs for profit um, on this daily close here because that worried me a little bit. Um, Aussie, lazy short still from pretty <laughs> from pretty good levels. But, uh, you know, we sold it up here at 69. Went all the way down. Didn't cover any here, of course. Bought Actually bought a little bit the day before that really sold off, which I think was, um, I don't know, that was a tariff thing or something. Uh, <clears throat> Euro, not much. Friday inside day, Sterling we looked at. Kiwi um, has bounced off that lows, but, you know, I like selling it through here. And uh, pretty much all of these risk currencies, so let's, let's take a look at Aussie Yen. Um, you know, any one of these yen crosses because there's something clearly going on in the Japanese yen it has I don't have the chart but it has been so strong even in the face of that equity rally that we saw from you know kind of Wednesday Thursday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Japanese yen was strong so there's something going on I, I don't know what but uh, people are buying the Japanese yen, and Japanese yen is a fucking safe haven currency like you read about. And so for me, for us here at Privateer, any, we are selling the low through the lows of all of these spike uh, lows from August 7th, which was uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, that would have been. So that's what, that's what we're looking to do. We're, we're going to just sell through all these lows in uh, the cross yen, the equity indices. I think that's a key point and, uh, and we're going we're to kind of, you know, stick with that direction. All right, that's enough. Way too long. Uh, good luck. I think the our European commentary is back soon. I can't remember which day. Um, We'll send some tweets out. I'm I'm back now from holidays, so I'm going to be in front of the screens, you know, all day, all day long. So I'll be shooting out some tweets and keeping you guys up to uh, up to speed. All right, good luck this week. We'll talk to you.
Cheers.